with your time. So uh, to start things off, my name is uh, João. Uh, I work at Life on Mars, a software consultancy company in Porto, sunny, sunny Porto. Um, I'll give you just a, a quick, uh, a quick uh, bio about why I should be talking about virtual reality. So um, I got access my first time to a virtual, a virtual reality kit about a year ago. It was the development kit one for the Oculus Rift. And it caused me a lot of headaches, a lot, a lot of headaches. But that didn't, make, that didn't stop me from trying to mod Half-Life 2 and trying to play at least some of it, because uh, let's, be, uh, let's be clear, and that's something I'll be covering up. There's a very big allure for VR and gaming. And so there's a big motivator there, both for the market, for the hardware, for everything. And I, the, the moment I put those headphone, uh, headphones, no, though, that head, uh, kit on, I was instantly sold. I thought to myself, this might just well be the future, but then I threw up. So if it's the future, we'll still have a little bit of hurdles next to uh, correct. But uh, if you uh, haven't noticed, there's a HTC Vive kit with the portal demos uh, right by the main entrance. So uh, give it a try if you didn't. I did for the first time uh, a few minutes ago, and it only uh, validates what I, uh, I keep insisting on saying like this. It is the future. So uh, let's begin. Uh, let's see what's up. Yeah, so let's talk virtual. Uh, this video is stolen from a uh, uh, default presentation that uh, A-Frame provides for these kinds of events. Um, it mainly showcases, well, it showcases bad video, but uh, after that, it mainly showcases the uses of VR in gaming and some other cool tech that is more fun than anything else. I'd like to uh, remind you that that's not exactly the point, even though, as I said before, it is a big, big allure. Uh, I'll just uh, let it go just a little while. Uh, some of these games are uh, actually released right now, some of them free, some of them not. Uh, but let's be honest, they're pretty much mini games at this point. There's no, there's no killer app for this yet. Uh, but let's go to uh, what matters, which is me talking, not this. So what exactly is VR? I've thought about this uh, for a long time, and I didn't want to give a complex philosophical question, so I'll let a series of gifts do the work for me. I, re I reject your reality and substitute with my own. Uh, VR can also be this, people being goofy all around and completely, completely ignorant of the world above them or the scenes they are making by themselves. Uh, VR can all, always be this, uh, just used to uh, view models in 3D or uh, to check out unknown places, stuff like that. Uh, you can use it in a more technical way if you'd like. There's infinite possibilities, even though those aren't exactly as um, appealing as virtual gaming right now. Uh, and it's almost, almost always ends up like this. Uh, this was actually also called a virtual reality device. Does anyone know what this is? This, in case you don't know, is... Uh, oh, that crashed. Cool. Um, this, if you didn't know, it's a virtual boy. It was Nintendo's first try to, do, to bring some sort of virtual reality to the masses. Uh, it had a monochrome screen. It uh, had red, red monochrome. It had really lousy resolution. And it didn't have head tracking. Uh, it lasted six months in the open market before it was recalled because of, uh, well, two issues really. One, it was uncomfortable and it made you uncomfortable because motion sickness and whatnot. And the price was too big, they said. Uh, I don't know, it was about $200 today money. Maybe if they, uh, I don't know, increase the price. Don't you just love working on laptops and darn yours? Uh, hold on, it seems we have some technical difficulties over here. Let me just refresh and see if it works. This might just be the worst possible thing that could ever happen and is happening. Okay, it's good, good. I don't have any speaker notes, but who needs speaker notes? Yeah, I do it. Come on. All right, great. Uh, it was about $250 in uh, today money. If they increase the price, maybe people will be more receptive. Who knows? 
but there's one thing that we have to address. Yes, VR now is mostly gaming. Uh, there are several corporations trying to compete in this area, all going for and gunning for the big bucks, which are Facebook, by buying Oculus, uh, Valve, which has their own headset, and uh, Sony. But that's not the focus of what I'm here to talk about now. VR is really, really, really much more than that. Uh, for example, uh, something I like to akin to uh, or compare to the VR stuff that we'll be seeing uh, nowadays is the Kinect. The Kinect is usually uh, built, it was originally built to be a, a gaming platform, but it sucked as a gaming platform. But what it didn't suck at was capturing, uh, capturing poses and positions and letting people work with their hands and move, actually operate software with their bodies. It was more or less that. And it found most, most of their users outside of gaming. The real, actual users were not inside gaming. It was so bad, so bad that even Microsoft tried to pull the trick again with uh, Kinect 2, and it bombed, hardcore. Nonetheless, it is done to, uh, it is used, virtual reality, to uh, uh, sort multiple things. Uh, PSCD exposure therapy is something that I found uh, uh, strange, but it's actually effective. Um, soldiers from Iraq and Afghanistan are immersed in an environment of war so they can forget about PSTD. Uh, it's also used for pain treatment because it's um, uh, about 15% more effective than morphine uh, in patients with uh, burns all over their skin. That means uh, when this is especially grave in terms of uh, kids because uh, when people are changing bandages, well, it hurts. It hurts like hell. And methadone and whatever just isn't cutting it. Strangely, virtual reality abstracts people from the pain. And it works. Like, like I said, it works better than morphine and other stuff. Uh, and it's obviously used for architecture and real estate. Why move yourself to another physical location when you can use uh, a couple of goggles and explore your, uh, your future, maybe, house in all relative comfort? Uh, it's also used for virtual tourism, but everyone here has used Google Maps, right? So uh, back again to the question, what is VR? Uh, I gave a more simpler question than all of that be before, which are experiences. It lets you be something you're not. It lets you do something impossible, like fly or explore the deep underworld where the pressure would be enough to uh, pop your head in. Uh, it allows you to transcend, transcend the limits of the human self. And I know that's kind of uh, hard to swallow, but it's what I find it is. Um, what can we use virtual reality for, with? Uh, here are some examples, you must know many of them. Uh, here is the HTC Vive, the Sony controller, uh, the Oculus Rift, the Consumer Edition, I believe, uh, Google Card for example, and uh, um, this thing here is the Galaxy VR, which is Samsung's attempt at doing something in that area. Uh, they actually partnered with Oculus and whatnot, but uh, it's kind of lackluster until now. Um, and because we're all uh, very much updated to what's happening in the world, there's a new player in town, which is exactly the same player as before. Uh, Google released a new version of Cardboard, which now is made out of cloth. And impeccably, it has its own controller. There's one thing about most of these controllers, half of them, is that they don't have input devices. You have to bring your own input device. Um, I'm ignoring the little button there on the Cardboard, because a single button is not exactly the same input device that this is, for example. Uh, that aside. Will be, uh, I'll be focusing on uh, Google Cardboard for now. So uh, how exactly uh, do we build these uh, experiences in virtual reality? Uh, most people would use a game engine, such as Unreal Engine 4, Unity, anything else, because these things are already made for or, and support out of the box virtual reality by itself. Uh, there are many, um, uh, how do we say it, uh, realty and architectural firms that use uh, game engines to showcase future projects before they're built. Uh, you can also try and uh, build your own, include yourself, but it's kind of a pain. Uh, or you can use the web. But how? Wait, how exactly? Enter WebVR. WebVR is a set of standards developed by uh, MozVR, which is a Mozilla team focused solely on advancing VR on the web. They have a very, very, very tough challenge ahead of them, but 
Will they do it? Let's find out. Using web VR, we can access the VR devices on a um, web environment. Uh, that means we can get sensor data and we can, well, we have the screen that we can render stuff to. Uh, the spec one was released in March, but nobody really uh, implemented it yet except Firefox Nightly. And uh, yeah, exactly, it's over here. Firefox Nightly, Chrome Experimental, Samsung Internet, because you know, Gear VR now, they, they have to go all in, or use just a mobile polyfill, and it'll sort of work. Uh, as I said, this gives us both the sensor data and ways to draw to the screen. So what next? What next is WebGL? WebGL is, um, it's, it's, a, it's essentially OpenGL for the web. It's based on GLAS 2.0, it's maintained by the same group, it's uh, performant enough, and it's all using JavaScript. Um, but it's verbose, like most 3D programming uh, applications. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of boilerplate involved. There's, uh, for example, we, uh, WebGL only deals in lines and points and trees. Uh, there's no cube primitive. There's no primitives at all. There's no uh, uh, draw cube and then you're done. No, you're gonna have to define each cube with each vertice individually in its own matrix. Then if you want to shade or add any texture to the cube, well, you're welcome to shade your town because that's what you'll be working on next. Drawing a cube should be easier. And there's a lot of people that agree with me in that aspect. 3GS is a 3D library built on top of open WebGL that makes you basically sane. Lets you keep your sanity while developing 3D, uh, 3D uh, applications, scenes, and whatnot. It comes with a useful bunch of features, as uh, delineated here, abstraction, geometry, uh, stereoscopy out of the box, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of stuff in here. And as you can see, drawing a cube is a little smaller. I, I mean, I can fit it in a, an image. I don't have to go record a video and put it that as the background. I can just put the image in. But no successful application uh, actually just draws a cube and makes money. You have a lot of things you have to worry about as well, such as, for example, the asset preloads, the stereoscopy, uh, scene initialization, you have to set up lights, cameras, action, all of that stuff. Um, Moz VR thought about it and said, wait, we can't easily iterate using these tools. This is too complicated. We need something more abstract, something easier to work with. Um, also, how is anyone ever going to do this? Because there's one thing that Moz VR also uh, understood that was, in order to be successful, VR needs, it needs people developing. It needs experiences. Virtual reality doesn't count for squat when you have nothing to run it with. For example, uh, if you are really, really, really into gaming, uh, again, the example, uh, why should you buy an Oculus Rift or something like that? Because while there are no games for it. Well, so Moss, uh, Moss VR thought hard about it and thought, yeah, we can, we can do better. We can do better. So uh, in summaration, VR needs content to, uh, uh, content to progress and doing traction. VR programming is 3D programming, and 3D programming is complicated. We can do better. Enter A-Frame. A-Frame is the, well, the framework we're all here to, talk, to hear about, mostly you, me not included, uh, but it's something that basically works on top of 3JS and makes you even it makes you an even faster developer. Uh, it comes with a lot of things out of the box, a lot of components. It includes some really nifty uh, systems to uh, define data, but we'll go right to it. So uh, as I explained, it's built on top of FreeGS. It's completely market-based, as in you don't have to write code in JavaScript to define your scenes. Your scenes live on the DOM, and that's where the fun, the fun part is. Moz VR thought, so um, we have a lot of web developers ready to work on web stuff, but if we try to show them, look, this is VR, this is great, you can do a lot of things with it. It might be the future of human-computer interaction. Okay, but uh, do I have to define matrices? What is a matrix? What, what, do, do one matrix, do they stack on top of one another? How do, they, uh, how do I cube? How do I cube? Um, they understood that it was going to be a problem. So they adapted most of uh, 
the three D complexity and abstract it all away into something that uh, common web dev can understand and thrive in. Uh, so as I said, all your objects live in the DOM, it is compliant, and all HMDs work exactly as expected because it comes with batteries included. Uh, in terms of community, it's also something uh, pretty major. It's, um, it's being developed transparently. All the milestones are publicly available. You can comment on them. You can join the discussion. You can say, hey, uh, this doesn't make any much more sense. You can submit a pull request for it. You know how open, so open source works. Uh, and so, as I uh, said before, it is directed mainly at developers without 3D experience. It focuses on VR mostly, but you can also develop 3D applications with it. VR just comes off, out for free. And the batteries included philosophy that I was talking about expresses itself such an, um, uh, for example, a valid 3D scene needs a camera and a, a light, otherwise you're going to have a black cube rendered to your graphics card. That's not great. And most people just forget that those things have to be there. So A-Frame, instead of crashing on you or something, it just adds some uh, default options that you can use. It's good. It's good. It's great for rapid development when you, want, when you want to prototype something quick in 30 minutes. And well, in 30 minutes, either it is or isn't. A-Frame helps a lot in that. Uh, this, for example, is uh, an, um, oh, there's one thing I, I forgot to put in this slide that is uh, uh, checked out before. Uh, A-Frame um, works using an entity component system. Uh, which, is, which is objects are random entities, uh, components are something that, are, that can be composable, uh, or in other words, you can apply any uh, uh, component to any entity and it gains, well, that uh, component's behavior, and you have systems which allow you to uh, coordinate all components in, in sync. Uh, right. These are, for example, one of those components that come out of the box and you can use right away. Uh, there's, uh, well, obvious things in there like light and uh, an isocahedron, but a video sphere sounds something um, more complex. It's actually a sphere where video is played. Uh, yeah, about the entity component system. So uh, this is a chart that uh, helps visualize what I think. Uh, on the left is what you use normally in OOP, inheritance. There's a base class, then there's uh, enemy classes or static classes, uh, actually immovable classes or static classes. Those have uh, some sort of behavior which is defined in their implementation of the subclass, etc., etc., etc. In the ECS, you can have an entity which is meaningless without any components in it. It's only a container. And then you uh, compose it using, well, uh, a lot of different components. Uh, for example, there's the component for movement, there's the component for has position, enemy, the uh, component for human input, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, let's have a simple example over here. So uh, we have an entity right here, which right now is nothing. If I render this, what I get is nothing. A big, a big field of white. Well, uh, yeah, let's say I use the audio visualizer component, which is something that accepts a few parameters. Uh, for example, uh, source, uh, audio, and a smoothing time constant. Uh, and bam, suddenly I have an entity which visualizes some audio. However, this audio visualizer requires some other components to work, so we're going to add them in. Uh, we, uh, we have something pretty uh, understandable by here. Uh, we have a scale that goes from the minimum to a maximum. Minimum is zero because it's the default. Uh, and the entity generator generates entities, 256 entities actually, based on a mixin called bar. We haven't defined this mixin over yet, so uh, let's get right on it. Uh, you can use mixins in, um, in A-Frame, which allow you to make uh, generic objects that you can use everywhere. Uh, here we have a simple bar with a geometry with a simple box, uh, a black material. Uh, we could have something bigger in the materials. We could have a shader in the material, but in this case, we just want a color. Uh, by the way, uh, shading uh, material in other frameworks usually requires a whole lot more than just setting material color black. Most uh, frameworks don't understand what that is. It might end up with you having to write a shader. Nobody wants that. Uh, there's also a component in this mixin that changes its color via its scale, which is managed by the audio visualizer over there. Uh, once again, these are the individual bars which are controlled by the visualizer itself. 
Uh, also, uh, because we want to have, um, instead of just a ton of boxes uh, in a line, uh, we can have them in a circle. Uh, what, the, what the entity generator does is, remember, this is an HTML tag, or as close to HTML, it's a tag. So let's call it HTML, might be a little too much. Uh, but this is a tag, a regular DOM tag, and uh, its generator generates entities inside itself. So there, yeah, there's something I forgot, uh, totally forgot to mention. Um, you can use everything in terms of uh, web technologies when dealing with A-frame. If you need to uh, add uh, a box, you add it to the DOM. You want to find a specific box, you run a selector. You want to delete something, you delete a node, and automatically it's data binding, automatically the 3D scene changes right before your eyes. Uh, which makes, for example, developing in Google Chrome tools, or your favorite uh, developer tools of choice, a breeze. Uh, let's look at that example now. Uh, here is uh, the same scene we just, uh, we just built, and well, here is mostly everything. There, you can see that there are, a sort of, there are bars. There is sound to this, but you don't want to know what, uh, what that is. You've noticed the ID, right? It's Rick Roll. So I think you know what it is. Uh, these bars change according to uh, what the component is telling them to, uh, which reacts in function to the music. So uh, there we have a, uh, sorry, let's go back. A simple controller with a scene 10 lines of code. It took me way too long to count them, but 10 lines of code. I'd like to see you do better in 3GS. Uh, so how does one exactly write a controller? There's a public API for that. Actually, um, one of the greatest strengths of A-Frame is, well, Mozilla has, they have it, their shit together. And what they have is smart people that tell them modularity is key. If you have modular things and you introduce them to the community, the community will build upon that modularization and bam, then you have a ton of uh, content and you can just uh, take from repositories and use in your app. Uh, registering a computer is, is simple. You have a schema which is the, um, the parameters you pass to it, the things we were passing as attributes in the DOM tag. Uh, and you have a couple of functions that, well, take care of the rendering functions for you. The initial function, what it does when it updates uh, the data, not the frame. When it updates the frame, the tick, and when it is removed. So uh, you, you could use these or you could use jQuery for all I or A frame could care. And you can use this component, well, easily like this. Uh, what's next? Uh, right, so uh, A-Frame is pretty simple. We uh, have built something uh, in A-Frame at Life on Mars, which is Vasteroids. Vasteroids is um, a version of Asteroids uh, that uses, well, cardboard, uh, all these technologies we spoke about, and it's actually pretty fun if you don't throw up while trying to spin around and take all the... Asteroids. Sorry, you got lost in there. Uh, I'll just give a quick demo, assuming this works. Or not. Weird. Uh, there it is. This screen is much better, than my, better and bigger than my screen at home. Sorry, I couldn't find the thing on time. All oh, right, we're not on. Uh, oh, that's bad. Mm. Well, I'll, uh, I'll skip this part and, uh, well, actually we're very close to the end. Uh, what I wanted to talk about right now at the end is there are a lot of examples online. A-Frame has tons and tons of examples you can try. There's a huge community of developers. Uh, there's one, specific, uh, one special repository that I, uh, I recommend. There's something called the Awesome A-Frame Curated List which has a lot of content by a lot of uh, community uh, members, uh, from systems to different components to uh, actual example code that you can look at and, well, either learn or use to build something great. And that's what I uh, wanted everyone to, uh, to know about. This is pretty great. This is a framework that abstracts away most of the pains that 3D programming always had and lets you be creative. That creativity is what's necessary right now for AR to survive and to thrive into something that 
I, I, for example, I imagine a future in 10, 20 years where we can use uh, a keyboard and mouse to use regular applications, or we can just use VR. The web can be fully VR. Imagine, imagine Amazon being rendered as an actual storefront where you can pick up items, look at them. All of this is possible. It just needs work. It needs labor. It needs dedication. And uh, as cliche as that might be, it requires love. So uh, all, I, uh, all I expected and wanted, please check it out, build some good things, uh, and let's make VR great again. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I was, uh, I was almost on time, actually. Uh, not having internet kind of screwed me over. But I, uh, everyone has, uh, or at least they're giving a free cardboard-like uh, not here, over there. Actually, I can just go fetch it. Uh, and uh, you can use this. And we have the source code available on our repository on GitHub. See if you can look up uh, Life on Mars and GitHub, there's the whole code there. It's not, it's not much, but it's certainly something because it uses pretty much everything. We developed this as part of the workshop that we gave on Porto and Porto Summer of Code. Uh, so check it out. It is pretty much complete. And it's good. It's fun. It's actually fun. So. Uh, Questions? Please. Uh, right, there's the whole. There you go. Are there performance benchmarks for this framework compared to writing FreeJS or native WebGL? It's marginally uh, worse than 3.js because of all the complexity uh, and abstraction it requires. But it's still run in the graphics card, it's still 100% WebGL. You just don't have to look at it. OK. It's good enough. Uh, next question. Uh, I know, everyone's just so excited to go and program their things in here, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Those, uh, those looks say it all. Does the framework allow to, allow to create complex scenes with animations and stuff like that? Uh, I think I, uh, yeah, I didn't showcase the animation engine much, but yeah, it's there. Uh, basically, um, you can tween every uh, parameter of any component. And uh, since, um, since all rendering is derived from the base state of the, the objects, the entities, uh, if you uh, change those values using a tweener or something like that, using any sort of these function, you can animate pretty much whatever you want. Color, uh, opacity, uh, even strings, if you want to tween that. No. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Uh, do you need to render to a canvas in the HTML, in the HTML, in the page, or can you render to, an, for example, if I want to render to a JPEG or a PNG, can I do that? Or uh, no, I don't think you can. I think you can using a JavaScript trickery because everything okay. is possible in JavaScript. You can render to the canvas and render that to the, but it's not something that uh, it's made out of the box. Why don't you submit a pull request? Uh, okay, thank you. Put you on the spot, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, anything? All right, I think that's it then. Might, uh, might as well. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, have a great event. There's nothing much to say.